Hey, how's it going on this Friday, June 28th? Lot to talk about in today's Foxy Games UK news video. Everything from surprising game remake announcements and some huge and I mean major Xbox and Amazon partnership news. But first, let's get the smaller stuff out of the way. As usual, if you like this type of thing, hit the like button, notification and subscribe. So yeah, our first news story, courtesy of InsiderGaming.com, Ubisoft has confirmed Assassin's Creed game remakes are coming. Yeah. Yes, those original Assassin's Creed games. Another franchise is heading for the remake machine as Ubisoft has confirmed that Assassin's Creed remakes are indeed on the way. In an interview with the studio's website, Ubisoft CEO Yves Guillemot says that the Assassin's Creed series would see a number of games in the future, including remakes. His a quote. Firstly, players can be excited about some remakes which will allow us to revisit some of the games we've created in the past and modernize them. There are worlds in some of our older Assassin's Creed games that are still extremely rich. Secondly, to answer the question, there'll be plenty of experience variety. The goal is to have Assassin's Creed games come out more regularly, uh -oh, but not for it to be the same experience every year. There are a lot of good things to come, including Assassin's Creed Hex, which we've announced, which is going to be very different, a very different type of game from Assassin's Creed Shadows. We're going to surprise people, I think. So yeah, he didn't go as far as to confirm what remakes were actually coming, but Insider Gaming has reported on the Assassin's Creed Black Flag remake is in development and the game is under the codename Obsidian. Yeah, sounds like a Microsoft game studio, doesn't it? Yeah, on top of that, Insider Gaming has seen brief footage of Edward Kenway in remake fashion under the condition that it is not to be shared. Anyway, as far as the engine being used for the Assassin's Creed remakes, it will be using the Anvil Pipeline engine that Insider Gamer first reported on back in March. This isn't a completely new engine, but it is a major evolution in what Ubisoft Studios are able to do when developing the game and required substantial changes to the in-game animations, parkour and more. So yeah, what do you think about remakes coming to the Assassin's Creed franchise? Personally, I wouldn't mind seeing, I know it's not that old, but I thought Assassin's Creed Unity, you know, the French Revolution one. I thought that really could do with an update on these new systems. 60 FPS, I know you can play it at 60 on Xbox uh, series consoles, but PS5 kind of missed out. And you know, I think the game could have had a little work, a little rough around the edges, but visually still one of the most impressive of the Assassin's Creed games. Sound off in the comments, let me know what you think about that one. But in a, another, Another remake is coming. InsiderGaming.com once again reporting in a recent post on X Capcom announced that a new Capcom Next Summer Showcase event is coming on July 1st, 2024, beginning at 3 p.m. PDT. This event will run for around 25 minutes, sharing info on three titles that will include the first details. Yes, another remake, Dead Rising Deluxe. They're calling it a remaster, looks more like a remake, which Capcom literally just revealed this week. The other two featured titles are Kunutsi Gami, Path of the Goddess and Resident Evil 7 Biohazard port for iOS and Mac. It has to be said that these ports to these iOS and Mac, uh, especially the phones, they're not really selling very well. But there you go, revenue, revenue, revenue. Now in a corresponding new blog, Capcom elaborates on the showcase content. Capcom confirms that the event will not include any updates on Monster Hunter Wilds. Boo. The event description on YouTube via the premiere feature broadens this, but it states that the event will not include news on updates for other Capcom titles, so fans may not expect any surprises akin to larger showcases. We can never get enough, can we? Now, Capcom recently announced Dead Rising Deluxe Remaster, I say remake, with a release window for 2024. It could potentially get a smaller window or exact date at Capcom Next Showcase. And there you have it. Remakes, 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 but another remake. Let's move on to this other remake. Konami remaking Metal Gear Solid 3. This story courtesy of VideoGamesChronicle.com. Now, Konami producer has said it will be a dream for Kojima to return to Metal Gear. Here's a quote. I'd like nothing more than to work with Mr. Kojima and the rest of the team again. 
What an interesting turn of events, especially after the unceremonious departure from Konami. Yes, we know that Kojima and Konami had a bit of a fallout, hence why he's created his own studio. But Konami's Metal Gear series producer has said yes, it would be a dream for the company to work with Hideo Kojima and other original development staff once more. So Noriaki Okumura made comments during a Japanese live stream on Friday with the caveat that he wasn't assuming Kojima and his former colleagues would necessarily feel the same way. Yes, as I say, Kojima split from Konami back in 2015 following a mysterious falling out following the conclusion of Metal Gear Solid 5. While Kojima still regularly talks about Metal Gear, he no longer has any control, creative control over the property. However, it would appear that tensions between the pair may have really cooled in the years since. Asked if there was any chance of original staff members working on Metal Gear Solid again, during Friday's livestream, Konami producer Okamura replied, It's not my place to answer on behalf of anyone outside of the company or to guess how they might feel about it. But just speaking for myself, personally, I'd love nothing more than to work with Mr. Kojima and the rest of the team again. If that could happen, it would be the dream. But people have moved on to new things and new commitments, so that's just our current reality. We can't just take for granted that everyone would work with us again or let ourselves be completely dependent on them. Interesting, very interesting. Seems like they're humbling themselves over there at Konami. Now he also added, I just don't think it's right for us to be the ones to make that kind of demand of anyone. Well, they can't, can they? So we're working with the expectation that whatever we make, it's up to us. It's on our shoulders to do a good job. Wow. So according to Okamura, many staff from the original Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater development team are already working on the upcoming remake. The main external developer working with the game is Virtuos. Okamura himself was a producer for many Metal Gear spin-off games, including Metal Gear Acid 2, Metal Gear Solid Digital Graphical Novel, and Metal Gear Solid Portable Ops, as well as Metal Gear Solid Portable Ops Plus and Metal Gear Survive. So in Friday's live stream, the producer went on to claim that, like with the recent Metal Gear Solid Master Collection, Kojima and the original staff would be credited in the upcoming Metal Gear Solid 3 remake in some form. He went on to say, since we had a lot of questions about this, Mr. Kojima and all the original development staff are of course credited for their original roles. They were already included in the Master Collection. They'll be listed in Metal Gear Solid Delta, Snake Eater as well. They're a part of these games too, so absolutely they're in. Well, that's nice to know, isn't it? Konami has previously stated that Kojima is not involved in the upcoming Metal Gear Solid 3 remake. The game designer currently has a full schedule with Death Stranding 2, an Xbox exclusive game OD, and a new IP with PlayStation for its believed to be PlayStation 6 console and a Death Stranding movie in the works. Interesting stuff. And you know what else is interesting? Moving on to our next news story, this time courtesy of Videogamer.com, Forza Horizon 4 has hit an all-time high player count following delisting announcement. So the Forza series, like many other racing franchises, is one of the biggest victims of the digital era of gaming. Due to the vehicles and music only being licensed for a set amount of time, the games can be no longer sold once this deal expires. And without Microsoft negotiating another deal and paying the required fees, well, would they? I mean, if we've moved on to Forza Horizon 5 or the player count has dwindled, maybe it's not worth reinvesting. But, you know, with the game being fairly old at that point, the revenue generated often isn't worth relicensing the cars and the music, which means the only other option is to delist and remove it from sale. Forza Horizon 4 is the latest game that is set to be delisted from online platforms, although the gaming experience for those who own the game won't be changed and players can still access all of the content, including the online aspect, once the game is removed on December 15 this year. So since the news was released that Forza Horizon 4 would be delisted later this year, many players have flocked to Steam and to Xbox consoles to purchase the game or jump back into the game for the first time in many years. This, well, this has caused the game to hit an all-time concurrent player count of around 48,437. Last check, it was 60,000 plus, beating the previous all-time high of 40,399 from May 2021, following it first being added to the platform. So it's actually higher than when it first got released. For those that haven't 
actually had a chance to race around the UK track yet. Forza Horizon 4 is currently 80% off Steam, making the Ultimate Edition just 16 UK pounds and 99 pence. Yes, one penny shy of 17 quid, including all of the DLC, of course. For those who aren't interested in the DLC, although you won't be able to purchase it in the future, the cost is just 10.99, a steal. Now, the Forza Horizon 4 Ultimate Edition includes the base game, car pass, VIP membership, Formula Drift car pack, the Best of Bond car pack, the Fortune Island pack the lego speed champions dlc which should keep players occupied for a few hundred hours i indeed have the game on disc can't delist me and i've got the james bond pack and many games so i'm glad they'll all be available to download if you purchased it digitally or if you own a physical copy it won't be totally removed from the servers you can still download your dlc content so if you're itching to find out more about this go ahead videogamer.com Jump on Steam, go on, on Xbox right now. If you haven't got the game, buy it pre-owned from a retailer online. I was going to say Amazon, but that's our next news story, isn't it? And my little homage to 1980s commercials. Now you can play your video game system without a system on your TV direct. It's new technology. It's totally rad. <laughs> Sorry. I couldn't help myself. Yes, news.xbox.com, Xbox Wire has confirmed, announced Xbox Gaming is coming to Amazon Fire TV. Play more games, no console needed. So at Xbox, they're committed to bringing the joy and community of gaming to everyone. And they've announced a collaboration with Amazon, where Xbox Game Pass Ultimate members in over 25 countries can play games directly from the Xbox app on select Fire TV devices via cloud gaming, giving people even more choice in how they play their favorite games. So in July, the Xbox app will be available on the Fire TV Stick 4K Max. That's $59.99 US dollars and the Fire TV Stick 4K. That's $50 for people new to console gaming and for those looking for another way to play. It's a great, low-cost, convenient and portable option to enjoy a huge library of incredible games. It looks like this is what's replacing that uh, all cloud streaming uh, dedicated little console box of Microsoft were going to release but cancelled. So yeah, to get started, players just need a Fire Stick TV uh, you know, app and a Bluetooth enabled wireless controller, which there are a plethora available in various colors. Xbox release a new controller pretty much every other month these days and an Xbox Game Pass Ultimate membership to gain instant access to hundreds of phenomenal games, including Senua's Saga Hellblade 2, Starfield and Forza Horizon 5, among others. Yep, and you can even maybe play Forza Horizon 4 on there if you get on there quick before obviously December. Plus, Bethesda Game Studios' beloved Fallout games are also available with the Game Pass Ultimate, um, including Fallout 76 and Fallout 4, and Fallout fans will be able to play these games on select Amazon Fire TV devices alongside the acclaimed Fallout TV show on Prime Video, which released in April. Little plug there. Now, once downloaded, the app is designed to offer a smooth and seamless experience. Just simply install and launch the Xbox app from your Fire TV device. You'll sign in with your Microsoft account to play. If you're an Xbox Game Pass Ultimate member, you'll have instant access to hundreds of cloud-enabled games. If you're not a member, you can join. Microsoft be happy to take your money. Connect a Bluetooth-enabled wireless controller. Controllers like the Xbox Wireless Controller, Xbox Adaptive Controller, PlayStation DualSense, got to mention. Wow. And the DualShock 4 controller. Controller, Microsoft playing nice here. They're all compatible, so you can start playing. So over the past several years, they, they, you know, Xbox have said they're on a journey to deliver cloud gaming to more devices, to more people around the globe, and excited to add Fire TV to the growing family of cloud gaming devices. In addition to the Samsung TVs that can access Xbox Game Pass as well to eager welcome new players into this experience. Stay tuned for additional details. You can read all about it on the Xbox Cloud Gaming Beta Fire TV devices at Amazon's blog. And to learn more about Xbox Cloud Gaming Beta, uh, you know, beta rather, just visit xbox.com slash cloud gaming. There you have it. Microsoft are literally going everywhere. And that's your news for today. Don't forget, like, subscribe, enjoy the weekend, and I'll see you on the other side.